lift our hands. We might as well get out of our comfort zone. We might as well do something that we've never done before to get the attention of a holy God. Amen. Let's go ahead and do that again. Let's praise the Lord. Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. He load us up daily with benefits. Amen. He woke us up in our right mind. He put gas in our car to get here. Amen. He put shoes on our feet, Lord. Clothes on our back. Is anybody glad of what God has done for him? He not only put clothes on my back, but he saved my wretched soul. I think that is enough praise to give God some. I mean, I got to get out of my comfort zone today because I can't find myself just patty caking. And Lord, you've been so good. I got to shout before the Lord. Wow. Let's praise the Lord. Anybody got a praise in the house? Let's praise him. He can do more than I can do. Let's praise the Lord. We can't be casual when we come to church. We got to give them everything we got. Amen. So I understand that this week, the devil ain't only been messing with me because I'm definitely not the only child of God last time I checked. And last night particularly, he was playing some kung fu. And I said I wasn't ready for all that. Start kicking me in my head, woke up with a headache, bless God. Thought about not coming to morning prayer. He was wearing me down. I know I'm not the only one he was wearing down. Come on, somebody. And uh, I was laying in the bed. Got to be here prayer at 8 o'clock. Thank you, Sister Burnett. Prayer. Hallelujah. And uh, it was about 7.40. I said, I'm sitting there pity patting. Ain't dressed, ain't brushing my teeth, ain't washing my face. I said, Lord, boy, this is tough. I know I'm going to church, but man, I don't know if I can make it to prayer. Because, man, I'm telling you, the devil, boy, I'm telling you, hit me with a crane kick. And I said, you know, Lord, I was trying to prepare. Amen. And uh, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to write these scriptures down. I'm going to be. Because I, I had to deal with this in the morning. It's too much. And wouldn't you know, the devil came on my journey and started messing with my journey. So, I mean, it was just, I mean, he was, seems like he was just relentless. But uh, I know many times the blessings of the Lord are dependent on position. They're depending, like uh, he said, he'll pour us out a blessing under the windows of heaven. Uh, he said the promise, if you go to Jerusalem, you'll be with endued with power from high. And we know 120 people were in the church. And the Holy Ghost fell. So, in other words, everybody in here is in the right place for a miracle to happen for you. So, everything that the enemy does is trying to get you from being in the house. So, since you made it here, you might as well go ahead and give the devil a black eye. You might as well and go ahead and praise the Lord. You might as well just give him your best. Because he is good. Man, God is good. And I also want to thank our bishop. We have an awesome bishop. Everyone in here is in good hands. He is a great man of God. And Pastor Bembry, the elders, I mean, I really love the church. You know, I kind of grew up in this, you know, I was straddling the fence, family didn't come, and I'm just really happy to be st still a part of the body of Christ. <sighs> you know, God is so good, and I thank for the truth that comes through, and man, everybody to just, just pray so much, and so kind, and cooking, we have a nachos tonight, 
And so I'm going to hurry up and get out the way so we can get some nachos. Say we having nachos tonight. Nacho cheese. Amen. Nacho cheese. Amen. I need to stop kidding and get into the word. If you have your Bibles, let's turn to 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. Uh, and it goes as follows, but ye are chosen generation. Look at your neighbor say, I'm chosen. A royal priesthood, say royalty. And a holy nation, everybody say holy. holy. And a peculiar people, just different, you know, I'm just a little different. I ain't strange, I'm just different. That you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. And let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for everything that you're doing here, God. We thank you for your grace and your mercy and your truth, Father. We ask that you bless the people today. Bless your servant as he tries to deliver your word, Father. Help me to articulate, Lord God, let somebody be blessed, let someone be delivered. Let us leave better and, and change, Lord God, and go into a greater knowledge of you today, Father. We love you and we thank you for all that you're doing and all that you're going to do tonight. And we thank you for the nachos. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And you may be seated. Lord. Amen. So, I'm not going to be before you long. I'm trying to go ahead and get out the way again because I'm standing between nachos and, and uh, cake and good stuff that we all love to eat. Amen. So, let's begin with the, the preface. We're all born with this condition. Everybody that's born into the world, everybody had it except one man. We were born with darkness, and I'm not talking about the darkness that when the power lines go down or if you forget to pay your Dominion power bill. <laughs> Amen. I'm talking about spiritual darkness. And uh, the darkness that I'm talking about is it's in the Greek, it's skotu. Uh, it means obscure, not well known. There's a shadiness, there's a dimness. I, I can try to make something out, but I really can't see what I'm looking at. And if with the people with the glasses say amen. So, and then we have light, which is false, I guess, and it means to make manifest, means to illuminate, means to revelate, means to open up our understanding that shadiness that was in our eyes before, it's now gone. So we can see things for what they really are, amen. Uh, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 59, verses 9 through 10, Therefore is judgment far from us, neither does justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold obscurity. So we're trying to see, but everything's just blurry. So I, I know uh, my promise is coming, but it seems so dim. But God, you promised it to me, and I know it's going to work, but right now it's a little dim. And he does stay true to everything that he has promised us. Uh, and he says, I, for brightness, but we walk in darkness. I can't see, but I know that you got something for me, but I just, I just can't see it. And it goes on to say, we grope for the wall like the blind, and we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the night. We are desolate places. We are in desolate places as dead men. Has anybody in here walked in the dark? Kind of scary, even when you're walking at home. You know, for those that have kids, there'll be that little Power Ranger toy or something like that. You hit your toe and you, hey man, or you bump into a wall. So usually you try to hold on to something when you really can't see to try to brace yourself just in case there's something in your way that might not want to take you out or if somebody trying to break in your house, it's good to have some lights on. Amen. And so, and this is a, kind of the same thing that we do, if we can put it in a spiritual sense. We're born with this condition, can't see, and we're just walking through life blind, groping anything that we can feel, 
uh, things that uh, will cause us, give us a little comfort to let us know we are right, but we're still walking in the dark, trying to come up with our own ideas, own philosophies, and own way to get to our destination. But you, everybody knows, but when you cut the light on, things are much clearer. So that thing that was in the way, that Power Ranger chore, you can just kind of scoot down, pick it up, then you don't have to stump your toe. Or when you're walking past the coffee table and hit that pinky toe, whoo, that seems like it's sending a shockwave through your whole body. I mean, something in that pinky toe connected to an artery or something. <laughs> hey, man. Whew, that big toe. You know what I'm talking about? That big toe. I mean, a little bitty pinky toe. That little bitty toe. Ugh. So sometimes when we walk in darkness and we don't have any understanding of scripture, we don't have a concept of God, sometimes we bump into things that can hurt ourselves. We walk in blindly, we get in relationships because we're walking in darkness and we think that what we are feeling is something good for us, something beneficial for us. But if we see it for what it really is, it means danger. So we always must cut the lights on. on. Amen. Amen. And... How we got this blindness, it was our great, 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 Folks, Adam and Eve, and they were in the garden, and the serpent started talking to Eve, and she said, hey, this fruit is good, it's desired to make one wise, and you're going to eat this stuff, you're going to be like guys to be able to discern good and evil, and your eyes are going to be open at that moment. All right, your eyes were open, but now you see your state as a very sinful state. And it was never intended for us to see ourselves, for us to be like that. We were supposed to live forever. So when, in other words, when the lights cut on, the lights really cut off. And now we're just walking around waiting for the promise of the Messiah. But I'm so glad that God just didn't give up on humanity altogether. Amen, because he gave a prophecy. He said in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. But between the first and the second Adam, oh, excuse me, I'm going ahead of myself. So we have this prophecy about the dimness going to be removed, and the light's going to come, and we all know that light is... Jesus Christ. So, we got this prophecy, and for about 6,000 years between Adam to Christ, we're waiting on this light to come back and illuminate us to try to get us back to where we belong as sons and daughters of a holy God. So, we're just waiting on a promise that God has given us, and there was a couple things that happened in between those times. They were in some Egyptian bondage, 400 years of that 6,000 years. They were taskmasters beating on them, uh, uh, treating them like less than human beings, feeding them the worst food that somebody could possibly eat, uh, doing this real bad. And if we didn't work fast enough, amen, we got a nice lick on the back, amen. And we had to deal, once we came out of the bondage of, of Egypt, we had to deal with some Jebusites, Ammonites, all the ites. And we had to, you know, deal with all that, the children of Israel I'm speaking about. And then we were in Babylonian captivity. And Nebuchadnezzar, I mean, he building all these images and stuff. And we just... Bind it up, but we still have a promise. Amen. And I'm thankful for those, the, the children of Israel. They preserved some things that were very beneficial that we can even learn from that we get today. So I am appreciative of the Old and the New Testament. Amen. Because it was a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Amen. And so for about 6,000 years or so, thousands of years, I don't know, we we're waiting for a light. We're waiting for the promised Messiah to restore us back to sonship and the blinders that we have on and walking in our own lust and can't do nothing right, can't stay to the letter of the law, can't just, can't get it right because we can't do it on our own. 
So we need some help, and we've been waiting. And then there was 400 years of silence, nothing. And it's trying to keep faith in the face of a silent God. Now, that's very true. 400 years of silence, and they said he was coming, but it's 400 years, and he ain't said nothing. And, I mean, that's the trying of your faith, because in your patience possess ye your soul. And uh, so we have all of that. And like I said before, and like the word has declared, you know, God is not a man that he should lie. So if he tells you something, he's going to do it. Because if he lied, that means none of his stuff is true. Amen. So if he said he's going to bless you, then he, he's going to bless you. He's got to bless you. If he said he's going to heal you, then he's going to stick true to his word and he's going to heal you. Because God cannot lie. It's impossible for God to lie. He can't lie. If he lies, throw everything else out the door because, matter of fact, he ain't God. But I'm glad I serve a God that tells the truth. He's merciful. He, he sticks true to his promises. And he's a God of love and mercy and grace. Amen. But then we get through all that in Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. So all of a sudden, that thing that we've been waiting for, that light to illuminate our minds, this whole time through all we've been through, through the silence, through the bondage, through everything, all of a sudden our promise shows up. And he's in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes, coming to redeem mankind. Amen. We're talking about light talking about darkness. We're talking about God taking us out of darkness and bringing it into his marvelous light. Amen. And so we, these are notable quotables. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 17, it says, In the beginning was the Word, the Logos, thought, plan, concept of God. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light. Talking about darkness and light. He was the light of men, plural, everybody, not just people that's in here, people that's out there too. He's a light for everybody. Everybody can taste of his goodness and his grace and his mercy. Anybody thankful for that in the house today? And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Amen. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe he was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. Oneness, amen. One God, amen. Amen. We serve one God, not two, three, four, five, six. One God. Jesus is his name. We go down in Jesus' name. Amen. This is a one God church, amen. We have revelation of the mighty God in Christ, Amen. Amen. In the beginning was the Word. Amen. And the Word was with God, and God was the Word. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Oneness, I'm, I love, I, I never forget, man. You open up my eyes to that. Whew. And the Word was made, and the Word will not. Okay, amen. Let's thank God for the truth. Thank God for the revelation of who He is, and that we don't have to serve a plurality of gods, and that we really have a revelation of the one true and mighty God. Amen. I'm so thankful for that truth that we have. I never wanted to get old. I never wanted to get dull. I never wanted to get used to hearing about God manifested in the flesh. Truth. Amen. Truth. That's what we have. We have truth. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. And Acts says that Jesus... He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So when Jesus came, when the light came, he came with a purpose. Amen. He came to restore us back 
to his sons and daughters, and his, to be his people again and to have an intimate relationship with him like we do. Amen. So, another, a couple of miracles that he, that he, that he did, you know, and, and it's recorded in the book of John. He turned water into wine. He healed the uh, impotent man at the pool of Bethesda, Bethsaida. He fed 5,000 with two fish and five loaves of bread. So he went about doing miracles, signs and wonders, opening up the blinded eye, unstopping the deaf ear, casting out devils. I mean, he came with power straight from the holy God, talking about his earthly ministry. Amen. And so we found one that's, I believe pertinent to what we what we are talking about tonight, and it says in John chapter nine, beginning at verse one. Y'all can just be patient with me. I'm just gonna go down. We're just gonna read the scripture. And as Jesus passed by, Amen. He saw a man which was blind from his birth. Amen. Jesus passed by. He sees what you have going on, but he just don't pass by. He stops to see what. He can what he can do to help anybody thank God for a God that passes by and stops and looks at you and see that you have a need and sees that you have a problem. Amen. And, and is willing and able to fix that problem. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered and said, Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Amen. Just like Brother Dawes and uh, uh, Pastor K.J. Towns, he, the things that we're going through are not always for us. We ain't do nothing. All we was doing was just serving God and just trying to do the best with the, that we can, and life just hits us sometimes. Amen. And Jesus goes on to say, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night coming with no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And so Jesus sees this man, this blind man, and he ain't do nothing probably to nobody. He was just a baby. He was born with this blindness. Can't see. I ain't, you know, I ain't God, I, I don't know. I didn't do anything to deserve this. I'm just trying to do what you want me to do. And all of a sudden, I end up with this, this tragedy. I end up with this trial. I end up with this this thing that, that I had no control over, but I'm serving you and I'm doing those things that are pleasing to you. Why? But he goes, he says that the works of God will be manifest. Amen. So it's for a purpose. Amen. And so he's, Jesus goes and, do, and does something. He spat on the ground. Amen. And gets some dirt, some clay. Wait, wait. Water. Trying to lose. And and anointed his eyes, smeared it, anointed his eyes, put it on his eyes so he got some spit and dirt in his eyes. Man, that got to burn. <laughs> but he was blind, I guess, so I guess it, I don't know if it affected him. <laughs> and he says, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which, is inter which by interpretation is said, and he went his way therefore and washed and came seeing. So his miracle was predicated on his obedience to the word of God. Amen. So he got all over that. And so now, hey, man, I was blind. I was little. I was a baby. I couldn't see. Now my eyes are open because this man named Jesus came by, showed compassion on me. And now, hey, I can see just like everybody else. Man. And so some said that this is he. Others said he is like them. But he said, I am he. So when you get a miracle from God, folks ain't going to believe it. They ain't going to believe that we, I, I was so far in debt, but God brought me out because I stayed true to his principles. Amen. He's not going to believe I had cancer that was going to take, take me out, but now I'm healed. And now, oh, it was medicine or something. You're going to have to believe God because the proof is in the pudding. Amen. Amen. And, and answered and said, a man that is called Jesus made clay. Giving honor to Jesus and anointed my eyes. He said, go, go to an, the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed, and I received sight. They, then they said unto him, where is he? Where he at? 
I can't see him. Where is he at? He's here. Not in the physical manifestation, but he's here because we feel his presence. Amen. He's in this church right now, ready to heal. Amen. And then the religious folks come around. They brought him unto the Pharisees, him aforetime that was blind. And when the Sabbath day was, uh, when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes, then again the Pharisee also asked him how he had received his gift. He said again, just in case you didn't hear me the first time, this man named Jesus Christ, sent from God, power, really cool guy, told me to go wash in the pool of Siloam, and I wiped out the dirt and the spit, and now I can see. You want me to tell you again? Because I can tell you again how he brought me out. Amen. How he took me out to miry clay and set our feet on a rock to stay. How he brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Just in case you want to hear it again, I can tell you about what God has done for me. Amen. Then said unto the blind man again, what sayest thou of him? That he hath opened my eyes. He said he is a prophet. He's much more than a prophet. He's Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind, naysayers, and received his sight and until they called the person him that had received his sight. So let's call, let me call in my mama now. And they can testify that I was blind, I was broke, I was sick, I wasn't in my right mind, I had need of medicine, and my parents gonna come and tell you, hey, I'm all better, because they can really testify for me. Because they know me since I was a baby. And his parents answered him and said, We know that this is our son, truth, and that he was born blind. Truth. But by what means he sees now, we don't know. Who, or who hath opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age. Ask him. And he'll tell you again. I went down, and Jesus saw me. He spit in the ground, made some clay, amen. He told me to go wash, and now I can see, amen. Tell him again. Tell the devil again that you thought you took me out, but I'm still here, amen. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. So religious folk pressure. Want to keep Jesus out of the church kind of pressure. Don't want to give glory to God kind of pressure. Just want to stay with your social status and don't want to ruffle any feathers. When you're walking with God, when you're walking with Jesus, you're going to ruffle some feathers. Amen. So there's going to be some folk that ain't going to like you. Amen. Uh, lost my place. Then again called the man that, that was blind and said to him, Give God the praise. We know that the man, that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I don't know. But he comes and caveats with this. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. And I think that's a testimony of everybody in here. We were blind. But now we see. We were in darkness, but now we're in the light. Amen. That's a testimony of everybody in this house. God has opened up our eyes to understand the revelation of the mighty God in Christ. Baptism in Jesus' name, infilling of the Holy Ghost, the repentance of our sin. That is the gospel. Amen. That is truth. Amen. And they, we go on to say, lost my place again. Then they said unto him, what did, he, what did he to thee, how open he eyes? He answered them again, I have already told you. And did you not hear what I just said the last five times? Wherefore, would you hear it again? Will you also be his disciples? So again and again, your testimony is your testimony Tell it to whoever you want to tell it with because it can definitely bring somebody out because if God did it for you, he can do it for somebody else. Let's praise the Lord for our testimony. Let's praise the Lord for our trials. 
Let's praise the Lord for his truth. Let's praise the Lord for his word, for bringing us out, for establishing our going, for taking us out of the hand of a wicked enemy that just doesn't want nothing to do but kill, steal, and destroy us. But it cannot because you're in the palm of the hand of an almighty God. It can't nothing happen to you unless God allows it. Amen. And you're going to work it out for your good. In Jesus' name. Amen. And he goes on to say that this man were not of God. He could do nothing. And they answered and said unto him, Thou was altogether born in sin, and thus teach us, and they cast him out. I got my miracle, and I'm in this church, but now I got revelation. That don't, this for a church that don't have revelation. Now you want to kick me out because I've experienced the one true living God. How about that? Amen. The truth that y'all been looking for is standing right before your eyes, and he has made himself manifest because this God just healed me, but y'all are too puffed up that y'all can't really realize what just happened here. Amen. I mean, I was blind. We were blind. The, the naysayers are going to have to, they're going to get this. We were blind, but now we see. They're going to, the proof is in the pudding. Amen. You can take a, somebody, bus kid, living in the country, no shirt, no shoes, in church. Amen. The proof is in the pudding. Amen. The naysayers are going to bow before the Lord. The Muslims, amen, blind, they, they do understand that there is one God. I guess we, I got to say, we have this agreement, but got to understand, the only way to get to that God is through Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. So you can have all this, you can have all that, you can be sitting in darkness, have a, a, a dim understanding of what you got going on. But you don't have truth. And the proof is always in the pudding. Amen. And if you like banana pudding, strawberry pudding, it's in there. Amen. <laughs> Stop messing. Get back on track. Let's praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. And so we know that Jesus came and he did so many miracles. He did so many things. But what he did on Calvary, I can say that was, if I can say that's the greatest miracle. To be pummeled, to be beat, to have his beard ripped out, to be spat upon, to receive those stripes. And back in those days, the, uh, the Jews, it was 40 stripes, save one. But the Romans, they were relentless. And they were just going, going in. It could be an innumerable amount of stripes that he took for us. But he did it for all of us. Did it for the whole world. He, he, he's that good because he is that God. Amen. And they placed the crown of thorns on his head. Blood began to run down his face. Again, he did it so we can see light. And... They hung him high, stretched him wide. Nails in that hand. Nails in that hand. Nails in that hand. Uttermost shame. On the cross, in the most shameful position. They ain't never did nothing to anybody. Came to love, came to be that light, be that promise. And he is that promise to, to take you out, bring you out of what you've been in. And I know you're great, great, great. Great, 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 Adam and Eve now, they put you in this predicament, but I, I told you back back about 6,000 years ago that I did make you a promise. The promise is here, and he's right here. You are crucifying the promise. Amen. They put a crown on his head. I mocked him. I mean, just did inhumane stuff because the Romans were some pretty – messed up people, and they just laughed at him. Hey, man, if you mocked him, if you are who you say you are, come down. Mocking him, spitting on him, 
had the audacity to put him between two people that, that did do wrong. He, he didn't do any wrong. He just came to help out and to restore us back to our rightful place, sons and daughters, sit with him in heavenly places. Didn't do nothing to anybody. I mean, he did ruffle some feathers because, again, it's truth. And it's contrary to our nature, and it's contrary to what we've been doing, and places we like to, things that we like to do, and it's contrary. We want to stay and mind our own thing. We don't want nobody to come in here messing up nothing. We want to run our own program. That's how we want to run it. So he didn't do nothing to anybody. All he wanted to do was help. Let him know, hey, look, you in this situation, I'm here to bring you out. I'm that promise. You Pharisees, y'all know, y'all, y'all scribes, y'all know all this stuff. Y'all know I don't fulfill these prophecies. Y'all know I've done these things. I am the light, the light of the whole world. I, I did this. And so we see the death. We see the life, the miracles, death, burial, and resurrection. And resurrection. So we already know that the light came and is readily available to us. But there's some people that don't know about all that God has done for them, and he's done it, but you don't know, you can't be a beneficiary of it because you just don't know. And not only that, we got a, a devil, slewfoot, adversary, that thing if you lift your foot up under your feet. Amen. So we got somebody that don't want you to know that Jesus came, did miracles, suffered, bled, and died. Don't want you to know nothing. Want you to stay and be comfortable in the position that you're in. Just keep on going to work. Keep on making all that money. And come to hell with me. You can make this, this your heaven. And ain't nothing compared to what we got coming when we get up there. Amen. And so we got this adversary that wants to tell you lies and tell you that Everything is everything. You ain't got to worry about Jesus. Ain't you blessed? Ain't you healthy? But what about when you don't get healthy, when you're not healthy? Amen. They ain't going to tell you all that. He want to tell you the quote unquote good stuff. Amen. But he's a liar and the father of them. Ain't no truth in him. He lying to you, he say, and he ain't going to come to you like, yes, this is Satan. Yes, I'm coming to get you. <sighs> he ain't going to come like that because you're going to know. Hey, man, that's the devil. Back up, man. He going to come. Hey, man. Hey, you cool, right? Hey, man, you know, come and take, take this job. You know, you can miss all that extra functions and stuff. You know, make a little more skrilla. I mean, money for the young folks. <laughs> hey, man, just make a little bit of this so you can get those new Jordans. Hey, man, get that new house that you always want. Makes it look real nice. I'm telling you, but it, it's just nothing but destruction. So if he tells you something good, it's bad. Hey, Amen. It's going to work out to be bad because that's the devil. He don't care how he gets you. He don't, he don't care if he gets you a watered-down message, go one of these churches, and you feeling all good, feel like you, you left. I'm glad I'm in a church that when preaching comes from this pulpit, I walk out of here knowing that I got something to work on, that I ain't perfect. I, I'm still going through the, the potter's wheel. I'm still going through something. Somebody let me walk up to me, Brother Brown, you need to get that right. I'm thankful for that. Brother Brown, you need to tighten that up. I'm thankful for a church that is really concerned, not just want to give you the fluffy duff, but want to give you the pure, unadulterated word of God and the teachers and the bishop and everybody in this church that comes behind this pulpit is just preaching you nothing but truth. Anybody thankful for truth? Anybody thankful for the word of God that comes from this pulpit? Every Sunday, every Wednesday, every special service. Amen. So thankful for that. Let me know I got to work on something. Don't let me know I'm all right. I'm going to hell. All you got to do is believe in Lord Jesus Christ. Look at the screen. Amen. You want some miracle water? Hey, uh, I'll give you this prayer cloth and you can. I do believe in prayer cloths. But you want this prayer cloth, but you need to send me $10,000 and you're going to get healed. No way. Amen. So it don't matter what he gets you with. Get you with sin, he can get you when you think you being righteous, but none of us are righteous. Amen. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. Amen. Ain't nobody 
better than nobody. And it's easy to look at somebody and say, I'm better than you to the bum on the street. But when you compare yourself to him, we ain't nothing. Ooh, we stand before him and be like, holy is the Lord. Amen. I don't, I'll track. So his job is to steal, to kill, and to destroy, and to keep you believing a lie. He don't care how he can get you, as long as he gets you. He can give you multiple gods, say, hey, trust in this. Jehovah Witness say it's only 144,000. That's it. Now, I ain't going to make it. <laughs> Man, I'm pretty sure they ain't filled it up by now. It's been a while. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. That ain't the truth. It ain't 144,000. It's to whosoever will come and obey the gospel. <laughs> Repent of your sins. Be baptized in Jesus' name. The infilling of the Holy Ghost. Living a separated and holy lifestyle. Coming to church. Reading your word. Praying. That's what's going to get you in. Amen. Not no 144,000. 144,000, that's it. We doomed. Hey, Amen. He ain't going to make it. If that's the case. Man. 144,000. Are you serious? And people believe that stuff. Because the God of this world has darkened their minds to believe it. Hey, Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them uh, which believe not. Lest the light. Of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So we got a lot of people out there that don't know that this free gift of salvation that costs Jesus everything is readily available to each and every one of them. To the prostitute, to the homeless person, amen, to the blue-collar worker. If I may, to the doctor, to the lawyer, sometimes we forget about those. They need Jesus too. I don't care how much money you got, you need Jesus. To the president of the United States, he need the Holy Ghost too. He need redemption too. And Jesus did it for him too. As long as you got flesh, as long as your heart's beating, as long as you're a human, it is for you. Amen. So it don't matter who he is. Who you are, excuse me, who you are. Amen, hallelujah. Blame it on Texas, Texas education. I'm missing. Who you are. Amen. You can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You can receive forgiveness, but you got to repent. You can turn away from your wickedness. You can receive salvation. You can receive the blood of Jesus in the waters of baptism. It's readily available to anybody, whosoever will. Let him come. It's for whosoever will. He did it for everybody. The worst, probably the person, the murderer, the person that done done wrong, that you can just think that he just need to go downstairs. He did it for him. He did it for him too. Ain't none of us in here perfect. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Amen. And so we try to get up. No, I need to hurry up. Nachos, nachos. And we try to categorize sin and try to put different levels on sin, lest we should forget that the first sin, all they did was take a piece of fruit off a tree. And that caused the animal to be towed down. Amen. So all have sinned. And you think, you take, a, you run by somebody's house, be like, huh, I'm going to grab this peach and try to run. What are they going to do to you? Slap you on the wrist. All have sinned that come short of the glory of God. So um, there's different punishments. The severity, you kill somebody, you go to jail. Amen. You still, what you call it, they probably take you to your parents or something like that. But all have sinned. He died for Stealing that candy, and he died for the murderer. He died for everybody. Whosoever will, ain't nobody better than anybody. The grace of God is available to anybody that's walking in shoe leather. And I believe that. Because it, it, it touched me. 
He touched my black heart, my dark and wicked heart. Hey, I'm serious. Nobody, nobody is perfect. It's the grace of God, not works. Care how much you do, it's never be good enough. What you need is some blood. What you need is the word of God. What you need is God to touch you. You know how I got off in that. And it goes on to say in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. There's some people that choose this being preached to them, they just, no, I don't want that. I will also reject thee that there shall be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of God, I will also forget thy children. So there's people, you know, unfortunately, everybody ain't going to want it. Unfortunately, and I wish everybody would just see what the eyes are darkened by an enemy that wants to have a couple partners to burn with, if I can say it like that. And it's tough to, to know folks going to hell. They're going to miss, not only that, they're going to miss out on heaven. They're going to miss out on, on all that God has done for them. Man. You just think about that. You just, man, uh, he did all of that. He's not winning at any should perish. That all should come to repentance. He wants to see everybody. He wants to redeem. He redeemed. He did this for everybody. And it's just it's disheartening. Bring tears to you out when you think some people just don't want it. But how many glad that they got it? Amen. Amen. How many glad that they got it? And it's so rough, but you know, it's, it could be our flesh, it could be the God of this world blinding our minds to see things, you know, dimly, and we're walking in darkness, so we can't see, so we bump into those things, and boom, didn't intend to bump into that, didn't intend to do that, didn't know. I didn't know I was sinning, I mean, I thought this was all right. I thought that was all right, because I'm blind. I can't see, but God sent somebody your way to tell you, hey, you can do this. You can, Jesus came for you. The light came for that darkness that you have over your eyes. I know you don't know. You're probably doing wrong. Everybody has a moral compass, but they don't know. Hey, I think this is all right. And the light comes and it illuminates. Does anybody remember when the light came to them? Does anybody remember when they was in a mess and somebody came around? In my case, it was a sister Luna. Amen. Old, old saint on the church bus, church ministry, bus ministry, came along my way. I said, hey, you want to come to church? And it happened to be a one God, tongue talking, apostolic, holy road, believing, sanctified life, church. And I went in. Didn't know, didn't know nothing about church. Thought you had to pay to get in because my, my stepdad gave us offering money. I was like, man, you got to pay to get in church? Never been to church. But I got, I'm going to go ahead and tell them myself. <laughs> we had a candy bar. My parents don't know this. But they had a candy bar there. And the $2 that they gave used to go buy candy and then put it in the offering. So, anyways, <laughs> put the money in the offering. Give it to God. Telling on myself, I didn't know no better. I was darkened. Hey man, laying on the dark. <laughs> and I went, and somebody, preacher came forth. Who need the Holy Ghost? Me, 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 me. I want the Holy Ghost. I don't even know what it is. <laughs> but I know. Uh, I had a small. It was you're gonna speak in tongues, and God, the Spirit of God, is gonna fill you. And I never forget that time, and it all went back to somebody. Uh, and I eventually got baptized, printed my sins, all that good stuff. And it all went back to somebody that didn't hide their light under a bushel. Went on a Saturday morning, like so, uh, some of us do, and go out and see some somebody in the yard. Hey, you want to come to church? Thank you for the for the outreach ministry of this church too. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And. Somebody that take time out their business schedule on, on their off day and say, you know what? 
There's something more important than my job. There's something more important than these bills. There's something more important than this house. These these bushes can wait. These heads in these uh, bushes can wait. I gotta go win somebody. I can't hide my light because there's somebody. I gotta tell them about the goodness of Jesus. I gotta tell them that he death, burial, resurrection. I gotta tell them about the gospel. Anybody thankful for the person that came in your life? God sent them your way to tell you about this glorious truth. Amen. And they gave you the word. The Bible says, and I'm closing. Psalms 119 and 105, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So we got people in the world that don't know that Jesus came and died. We got people in the world and we got some people in the church that don't understand that by his stripes we are healed. Amen. And in, in the judicial system, sometimes you might not know certain laws that you are privy to that can be beneficial for you amen so you got to search the law book if you will and you got to look through it and there's some promises in this law book that are really readily available to the children of god so not just on the level of salvation amen so that healing that you think that can't happen according to the book by his stripes, you all already healed. Amen. He, and in the book it says, I wish above all that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Amen. So this word is a light. So the revelation of this word is a light. And there's a lot of things that we don't take advantage of because we don't know our rights. But if we can dig deep in this word, we can see those things that God has available for us that we didn't even know that was in there. That healing, covered in the word. Your financial breakthrough, covered in the word. Your mental health, covered in the word. That sickness, covered in the word. Amen. Revelation. The light came on. It's not just Acts 2.38. It's after Acts 2.38, he still wants to bless you. Amen. He still wants to heal you. Amen. If we can all stand. And I know we have a good time tonight. And we got nachos to eat. But this altar call us for people that have an understanding even now that the enemy is under our feet because he is. Amen. Tonight, the altar call is for people that, hey, I can get back what the enemy has taken from me. My joy, you got to give that back because victory is mine, thus saith the Lord. So that healing, I'm going to need that. Amen. So this altar call, if y'all want to come down now or come down late, this altar call is for those that has been, that mind has been revelated, that want to just praise God tonight and thank him for truth, thank him for his mercy, thank him for his grace, thank him for everything that he's done for him. So this altar call is just a praise for the light, a praise for bringing him out of darkness. Amen. Rejoice not against me, O oh, my enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Amen. Amen. As you musicians begin to sing, do what you feel. Praise the Lord how you know how to praise him. Praise the Lord if your head hurting, still praise him. Thank him for the revelation. If, if you're dealing with financial difficulties, praise him. If you're going through trials and tribulations, praise him. I don't even know what you have in your heart to do. Just demonstrate it to the Lord and watch the Lord move. If you come here and you need a healing, praise him. If you need your eyes to be open, praise him. If you need the Holy Ghost, praise him. If you need repentance of your sin, praise him. Give glory to the one true and living God in Jesus name.